All right, everybody, uh, joining you, uh, we have Donald Kendall, myself, the host of the In the Tank podcast, and Justin Haskins, editorial director at the Heartland Institute, representing the Stopping Socialism Project here at the Heartland Institute. Justin, how are you today? This fine I'm doing very well. Uh, today's a beautiful day. Today's <laughs> a very beautiful day. So, uh, so we're going to be talking about the Iowa caucus and pretty much the disaster that has resulted from it. Um, but just, just to give a little kind of context to this. Yesterday, Justin and I were talking, and we thought tomorrow after the, the caucus, we're going to come here and do a little 15-minute video just talking about who we thought presumably was going to be the victor, Bernie Sanders. And we what were so excited. We were so yeah. excited. Right. What the implications of that would be. And, uh, you know, we we're just going to talk for 15 minutes, just giving our perspective. What we did not expect is for an absolute cluster to occur. Uh, I don't know about you, Justin, but I stayed up till midnight just assuming that they would get their act together on this. Uh, but I assume that people that are watching this video kind of know what's going on. But uh, Justin, you wanted to give it a, just a brief description of, of last night events. Yeah, I, l like you, I stayed up. I watched it. I thought this was going to be very interesting. I was really excited because I was hoping Bernie Sanders would win. And I really want Bernie Sanders to win the primaries because I think he was going to lose the general election. Sure. Uh, but, but I, I, I mean, like everybody else, I just kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And we would see all these reports coming in and pictures of people in gymnasiums, you know, moving from one corner to the next. And I just thought, where are the results going to be? Supposedly this is, and then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse as the night went along. And like you, I, I stuck in there till about midnight, maybe 1230 my time, which is an hour, uh, you know, uh, ahead of you. And so yeah. about 1230 midnight. And then I said, you know what? I just can't do it anymore. I'll, I'll wait until the morning. Then the morning comes and lo and behold, nothing happened. We still don't know. We have no clue. No, <laughs> no clue. It's the most embarrassing it's so I, embarrassing for the Democratic Party. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a couple of people make this, uh, this, this, uh, the statement. So I'm not trying to claim this as my own. I've seen a number of people, but it's like if you can't even count people in a, a gymnasium, how are you going to run the healthcare system? And like, I, I honestly think that that's like a legitimate criticism. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Some of these, so. The, the caucus and correct me if I'm wrong here, but basically each district or precinct, uh, they have a gathering of people. And uh, so they go there and the rules kind of change. So this could be a little bit muddled here, but uh, they basically cast their ballot. They stand in a, 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 a group of, of people to vote for what candidate they want, depending on if a candidate does not get 15 percent of the people that are in that precinct, then they, they're not viable and they have to split up and go to a different one. Basically, like that's how they decide who wins each precinct. And some of these, we're talking about Iowa here. Some of these precincts are like 40 people. How do they not be able to vote and turn in these results, Justin? I don't get it. Well, well, that, that that's the thing, right? There has to have been, they, nothing's been reported, okay? No, no results have been reported. But there has to have been results reported to the main Democratic Party apparatus in charge of all this. There's no way that that hasn't happened at this point. Because like you said, some of these precincts, there's 1,600 precincts in Iowa. Have you, I mean, I know you've been to, but you've been to Iowa, Donna. We've, yeah. talked, we, we've talked about Iowa before. Most of these precincts are just tiny little small farm towns is what they are essentially. Mm -hmm. And it could be 15, 20, 30, 40 people in a room making these decisions. There is no way that those people weren't able to report their results. There's just no way. It had to have happened. So why haven't we heard that? That's where all the crazy conspiracy theory stuff is starting to come out. Uh, yes, because something, something's going on here. Something's going on. Well, I want to get to that. Uh, but yeah, there has been stories about... Uh, Basically, the, okay, so the, the official story is that the app wasn't working, right? They couldn't put their numbers in and send them to the central organizer or whatever, right? It's a joke in itself. Uh, but then once that was reported to have happened, apparently, like, these precinct captains were trying to call in their, uh, their, their results, and, like, the phone bank was overloaded. Uh, other people, other precinct captains were, like, tweeting out their results, to which, like, the, the state party was saying, like, no, don't do that, <laughs> whatever. Um, but I think that the end result of this, and, and we talked a little bit briefly this morning about this is that, uh, in the grand scheme of things, 
Iowa in itself is not the biggest deal. Uh, that's what like 40 delegates and Something they're like proportionally that. given out. So like, even if Bernie Sanders won the state, he could theoretically only be like one or two delegates ahead of second place. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that big when it comes to delegate counts. However, what people have been talking about is that it's a big deal when it comes to the fact that it's the first state for like a week. And the, the winner of this gets to come out and, and say that they won before moving on for another week in, in New Hampshire. And not only that, it's like a giant fundraising opportunity because it's now, it, let's say you outperformed what your expectations were. You're now the front runner in the eyes of the public. You can potentially get a lot of money, a lot of donations from this. So the, that's that's where we start getting into the Bernie Sanders conspiracy stuff, right? Because... <laughs> It seems, from by all accounts, if you're, uh, you know, you and I were going through Twitter and and watching the the convention stuff, the caucus stuff, and it seemed like he was the front runner, like he for sure is going to be the winner, right? But now all of those potential things, uh, those benefits that he would have gotten by winning, are nullified. And right. and it, like I'm not a Bernie bro, <laughs> but I feel <laughs> like the fix is in, man. <laughs> like I, I think a lot of Bernie Sanders fans across the country supporters are going to be justifiably very upset about all this. Yeah, exactly. There's no question that this hurt certain people a lot more than others. Bernie Sanders is one of those people that, that this, because it, because if Bernie Sanders did actually win this thing, it would have been a big, big, huge victory for him because going into New Hampshire, he's also favored. If he wins in New Hampshire too, that's two states in a row. I don't know that there's ever been a, a candidate that's won both Iowa and New Hampshire and not captured the nomination in hmm. modern political history. Uh, so that, that it, it's a huge momentum builder to win those two states. And now we'll never know, probably. We, we, we might never know for sure whether or not he clearly won because even if they release the results and they say that he won, the other side will say, well, yeah, but, you know, maybe there were some problems with the app. And because because from what we're the early media reports we're seeing right now, and this is early, but the early media reports are that they may not know in some of these precincts who won because of the malfunctioning app and all this other stuff. There was rumors last night on some of the media reports that I saw that they were actually flipping coins in some places to, yeah. to, to sort of settle disputes between candidates who, who gets the delegates and who doesn't. I mean, this is a gigantic, gigantic mess. And you know, it's a gigantic mess when even the liberal media, even the far left liberal media, I'm not just talking about like fake news, CNN and people like that. But I mean, the hardcore left is furious over this. And they're even admitting that the headline on slate right now, okay, which uh -oh. is, you can't go any further left than slate is the Iowa caucus. This is the headline story. The Iowa caucus results failure is a debacle for Democrats. Like mm -hmm. even they are willing to admit this is, this is just absolutely uh, terrible for their side of things. And going back to what you said before, really, why does this matter? This is not just a political issue. This isn't just about scoring political points or anything like that. It matters because it is true. If you can't do something as simple as have as build an app that counts and, and reports votes and you had four years to do it and the <laughs> last time you did it, it didn't go, it didn't go well. So you knew that you had to make this count and you have a vested interest in this because you know, the world is watching, you know, this is really important. You have all the money in the world available from the democratic party to make this work, presumably and you still can't figure out a way to make this work, then why would you be able to run the entire healthcare industry? And not just that, but student lending, K through 12 education, Amtrak, anything. Why should we put you in charge of anything if you can't count votes and deliver those votes via an app? This yeah. is something that, that on a regular basis, the free market does way better in way more complicated situations. Right. And yet we can't, they can't figure out how to do it with four years of time to, yeah. to come up with something. No, it's unbelievable. Uh, there, there are still a couple of things I want to get to. One is uh, like I kind of referenced earlier. It's like some of these precincts are like literally 40 people, right? Like how do they not have the results in it? I, we, just before we recorded this, uh, I looked up and still nothing is shown zero results, uh, reporting. So why could that pot? Why is that? I, I, why in your opinion, is that the case where we got nothing, no results? 
So I, I think the the sort of conventional answer is that because it's been such a disaster at this point, they don't want to report anything until they know for sure what the outcome is. Okay. And you could say that that's what's going on. Uh, I personally think that there's probably something else going on here. Now, I don't know exactly what that is. There's a lot of different theories out there as to what could be going on. Uh, but I think personally, my, my sort of conspiracy theory of choice is that they changed, as you noted earlier, they changed some of the, the rules and uh, for, for the way that people can caucus. That you, you mentioned earlier that the way it works is you have a, uh, you, you vote, you go to this location, you choose the candidate you want. In, in many places, you physically actually walk across the room to a particular corner of the room and stand there with the people that you support. And then after that, if you're, uh, they tally up all the votes and based on percentage within that precinct, they then basically eliminate some of the candidates if they didn't get reach a certain threshold. That threshold is 15%. Yeah. So if you didn't get 15%, if your person didn't get 15%, then what happens is you don't just go home. You then get a chance to go to some other camp. So all these camps get to sort of lobby for you to come vote with them. So you get another shot at voting with somebody who's considered sort of a viable candidate. Well, they changed this. My under This is my understanding of it. I'm not an expert of Democratic Party Iowa caucus rules or anything uh, like apparently that. Apparently nobody is. <laughs> <laughs> nobody is. But my understanding is from the media reports I saw last night while I was waiting and waiting and waiting uh -huh. for something to actually happen is that in the past or at least last year or last time they did this in 2016, you were allowed if you, you were allowed to move camps even if your person got 15%. Mm. So you could move in the second round of voting, you could go to another camp. So maybe you voted for Joe Biden the first time and he gets 17%. You're allowed to leave and go someplace else. But this time you weren't. So you had to stay. The only people who could switch their vote were the people who were in the camps that didn't reach that 15% threshold. Now that's my understanding of this. Now, if I got that wrong, I apologize. The point is this, something changed. The rules changed. I believe that's what it was. The rules changed as to who could go where and when and all of that. And the early media reports when we weren't getting results were that there were reporters saying that there were people in precincts complaining that there were people moving when they shouldn't have been moving, that there were issues related to that going on, that there was confusion about what the rules should be, that some of the precinct captains were having trouble figuring all this stuff out. And as a result of that, if that happened, let's say you had a precinct where somebody moved when they weren't supposed to move or, or thought or after the fact, did maybe they didn't know that they could move sure. and then they and then after the fact they realized that they could and then they're demanding that they get their vote back something like that i think was going on in a lot of different precincts mm -hmm. and i think that maybe just maybe that's really the issue here the app right. might be a problem as well but i think that that may be the issue that maybe they realized you know what if a bunch of precincts violated the rules this whole thing is going to look like yeah. like it doesn't count at all and and what, what do we do, we do? Then? that would be even worse than an app not working at least an app not working is a technical problem this so, isn't a technical problem so let, let's uh let's let's go to a a topic that i think would be a little bit more of an interesting uh and that's the idea of of uh the system being rigged against bernie sanders right so obviously stopping socialism uh bernie sanders is our favorite so <laughs> Our favorite socialist. Uh, but like, you know, if we flash back four years, um, it seemed like Bernie was screwed out of uh, out of the nomination. Right. At least that was kind of the narrative that was going around pro Bernie Sanders circles. Fast forward to now. And this is happening. And like we said, we, he has already missed out on this potential fundraising uh, opportunities, uh, the, the opportunity to go out and declare victory in Iowa. So is the DNC. Uh, 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 trying to stifle him. Uh, is that, would that be in their best interest? I don't know that that seems a little out there for me from, from a party that, you know, we report on all the time, like seemingly going further and further left, but is the establishment Democrats trying to edge him out in favor of somebody else? Cause, and, and I, I'll say this uh, to add on to that idea is a big victor in this whole kerfuffle is, is Biden. Biden could potentially be like fifth place. But he gets to go out and say, you know what, we're going to get our share of uh, delegates and we're going to move on to the next state. If he ends up ha actually have been in fifth place, 
that may be super detrimental to his. And he's obviously the big, uh, uh, you know, establishment uh, um, candidate out there. So is the DNC, Justin, trying to uh, chop down Bernie at the knees? So I think that they're I think the answer is yes. Hmm. The question is, are they trying to do it with this primary? My gut would say no. I don't okay. think they're trying to do it necessarily with a primary, but, uh, but do they, uh, is it in their best interest for him to lose? Absolutely. Mm. Because having a, having a self-avowed socialist as the face of your, of your party is never a good thing in a country where very few people actually want to vote for a socialist. It's right. like a quarter or something like that at most. So um, it makes it, 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 there's no question that that's what they want. I mean, even Barack Obama, came out and essentially, or it was leaked that Barack Obama has been quietly going around telling important people, you can't choose Bernie Sanders. Mm. My God, you can't have him be the, and Hillary Clinton released this. Uh, there was this documentary released about Hillary Clinton and she had a sit down interview where she just destroyed him in the interview. It's a <laughs> terrible person. She just destroyed him Yeah, and, and she's not running. So, and, and Obama's not running. Right. So these people are passionate enough about this issue to say, you guys, like you're going off the cliff here with this guy. Right. There's no question that that there are a lot of establishment people in the Democratic Party, and not even a step because I don't even really feel like Obama is an establishment person per se. Oh, there, mm, I think he I, is now. Well, yeah. I, I think he, I think he's sort of become that. Sure, but I think that I don't think that's what's motivating him here. I think what's motivating him and others here is not that they love the establishment, but that they truly truly believe that Bernie Sanders will lose. <laughs> That's what they think. He's going to lose. And and they don't want to lose again. That's a big that's a big thing for especially Obama because if they lose again, his entire legacy is dead. Yeah. It's over. I mean, most of it's gone anyway, but it would be totally finished if he loses again. And so, do they want him to lose? Yes. Are there insiders rooting for him to lose? Yes. Do some of those insiders live in Iowa? Probably. Yeah. But are they the one? Are they actually sabotaging the primary? I I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> but you never know. I, and I, if you're a Bernie person, you're gonna assume they are because that's because you've been screwed so many times before. You have to think that that's what's going on here, right? I think so, man. Honestly, I really do. Uh, so I don't know, unless you got something else that you want to kind of add to this conversation, we could probably wrap it up. Um, folks listening, if you want more content like this, we do the in the tank podcast every week on a Friday. So feel free to check that out. That's also on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google play, pretty much everything nowadays. Uh, we do want to do more of these kind of short little videos. Where we're commenting on just kind of daily stuff. Uh, so if you have ideas, things that you think that we would, uh, that would be interesting for us to talk about, feel free to email us at in the tank podcast at gmail.com. Uh, Justin, any last comments? Let people know where they can find you. Uh, at Justin T. Askins on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and you can also go to stoppingsocialism.com. Go to stoppingsocialism.com. All kinds of great material there. And uh, we'll be launching, we're rolling out a Stopping Socialism YouTube page so channel. Look out for that. Uh, we're going to be posting all of these videos about socialism there, as well as on the Heartland YouTube page. So you can go to the Heartland YouTube channel and find it there as well. And hopefully a lot of these will end up on the website too. So uh, lots of different resources for you. Stoppingsocialism.com is the very first place you should go for socialism related material. Um, and thank you, Donnie, for doing such a fantastic job. Hosting All this. right. All right. And we will talk to you next time, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and consider donating to the Heartland Institute to support more vibrant free markets, greater individual liberties, and more videos like this one.